So I've now gone through Live's factory library and taken various samples from the drum hits folder for the tambourine, shaker and conga, and then just dragged them to the different pads in the rack to try and create a more natural sound. Just muting these higher frequency sounds for a minute. You can hear that in converting this drums loop to a new MIDI track like this and then dragging your own samples to the pads, it's a very quick and easy way of capturing the essence of this original loop with its natural variations in timing and level and making it your own. And of course, with all the drums on their own individual tracks here on the mixer, it's really easy to get the balance exactly the way you want, adjusting levels and uh, adding individual processing to each drum if you want to as well. Another thing we can do with the drum rack here is we can, using the return section, apply group processing to all our drums. So we could take a reverb, drag it down to the, the return section, Make sure it's set fully wet. And then making sure the sends is on here, we can use these send sliders to send any of the drums to that reverb. I think it's this uh, highest frequency kind of rim tap sound which has the most reverb on in the original loop. So if I turn that up, And again, as these drums are all separated off now, I can apply whatever levels of reverb I like individually to each drum to get the sound exactly the way I want. And another thing I've done here is to duplicate the track. So we've now got two identical drum racks on their own tracks here. And I've edited the MIDI clips so that one just has the congas and the other one just the tambourine and shaker. The reason for doing this is that we can now edit these MIDI clips independently of each other. So we could do things like take our groove, which if I play this tambourine and shaker and drag it to that clip, you can hear it totally destroys the timing. So if I undo that, what we'll do is instead drag it to just the congas. But actually what I'll do first is option drag. So we've now got a third groove here and I'll take out the velocity parameter because we don't want to adjust the levels. And now if I drag that to the clip, then it's going to be now locked in with the groove that we've got going on in a lot of our other clips. If I like, I can just bring down the timing slightly so that it only sort of drags it part way to this groove. So it doesn't actually totally destroy the original timing in this loop. One thing you might find is that even though we've recreated this loop with our own percussion tracks now, it can be nice to keep the original loop in the mix. Just have it very low and often filtered as well so you keep things nice and clean. If you just listen to the sound with and without the filter now,
it just adds a bit of extra brightness and character to the sound, but without overcrowding things. So it can be a nice thing to do.